Welcome back, everybody. I'm David Asman in for Lou Dobbs. President Trump today joining family members who have lost loved ones at the hands of illegal immigrants. Together, they demanded Congress take action to fix our broken immigration system. Take a listen. These are the stories that Democrats and people that are weak on immigration, they don't want to discuss, they don't want to hear, they don't want to see, they don't want to talk about. 63,000 Americans since 9-11 have been killed by illegal aliens. This isn't a problem that's going away. It's getting bigger. Remember when you go home and hug your kids? That there are many of us, thousands of us, who don't get to do that anymore. And let's work together and get this done. All politicians, I don't care what side you're on, you don't want your child in a casket or in an urn. So get it together, for God's sake, for this country, for our citizens. She was holding an urn, which was all that remained of her son. Joining me now is Pennsylvania Congressman Keith Ruthfuss. He serves on the House Judiciary Committee and the House Committee on Financial Services. Congressman, this is one of the most powerful meetings at the White House I have ever seen. There was nothing fake at all about this. I'm, I'm wondering what you thought about it. Well, whenever you're talking with families who have lost a family member uh, in any situation, but particularly when somebody's been killed or murdered, and then you look at the situation that led to that murder and find out that there was an illegal alien involved, uh, you start asking a lot of questions, or that family can start asking a lot of questions. How did that person get here? How did that person stay here? Uh, particularly, some of these folks ha do have records. Uh, look, we have to fix our immigration system. We have to fix our border. We have to secure the border. That has been an issue for not just one year or two years, That's but right. for a very long time. Uh, we have a proposal that we voted on yesterday, unfortunately came up short. Not a single Democrat voted for that bill that would have secured the border and provided a legal status for a certain DACA recipients, or for all the DACA recipients, that is. Uh, so again, it is past time to secure this border. We are going to continue to do this until we get the job done. The president campaigned on this. This is a big issue. The people want that border secured. And it's, you know, it's, it's also not just important for the safety of Americans and people who live here now. It's important for the safety of a lot of those illegal immigrants, particularly the children, uh, thousands of whom, tens of thousands of whom are sent across the border alone. I mean, completely susceptible uh, to the worst kind of, of criminal predators, uh, those coyotes who, who prey particularly on the, young, on the young girls. They are exploited. They are exploited by evil organizations. The cartels have wrecked havoc in Mexico. Over 130,000 people have been murdered over the last 10 years. Those same cartels are responsible for the poison that's coming into this country, the poison that's known as heroin that's killing people here in western Pennsylvania. That's another reason we have to secure that border. The bill that we voted on yesterday would dr dramatically increase resources to make sure the ports of entry along the southern border, those places where the cars are coming in, that we have more people on yeah. that, that, that can be doing the inspections, more equipment to be doing the inspections. We should be inspecting every single vehicle coming into this country because that's where the poison is coming in. And if that's not a reason for somebody to step up and vote, yes, I'm going to secure that border, I think the Democrats, frankly, have a lot of explaining to do why they want to well, have an open border. Frankly, border. Congressman, it's not just the Democrats. Some Republicans have a lot of explaining to do as well because you guys did put together, the Freedom Caucus put together a, a, a bill that... that it didn't almost pass, but it got a lot more votes, let me put it that way, than many people expected. You got over 190 votes. Uh, well, you, yeah, this is much, much broader than the Freedom Caucus. This, you saw a broad coalition of, of, uh, of our right. conference. Well, clearly, because there are more than they're, they're, 190 is, is a huge amount. It's far beyond the Freedom Caucus. But why didn't you get the support uh, from the speaker. Why didn't the speaker do more? And, and is it possible, is it conceivable that in the coming week or weeks uh, you could add to this bill enough uh, sweeteners, if you will, to, to, to bring enough people to pass it? Well, that's the hope. You know, we had a conference last night. We pulled together. We regrouped after that vote. Uh, there are some folks who have additional concerns about this new bill that we're, we are looking at. I'm still taking a look at it. Again, I'm looking at it from the perspective of I want that border secure. I want to be addressing the problems. There are some good points in this piece of legislation we're taking a look at, ending the diversity lottery, for example, uh, uh, taking a look at the asylum situation, this, this situation where we have people coming in to the country and abusing the asylum, asylum 
asylum system, to be able to tighten up uh, what's happening with, with the asylum and making sure it also addresses the, the issue of the children being separated from their parents when they come here. Yeah. Uh, both bills, the one we voted on yesterday, the, the one we're taking a look at right now, addresses that very important issue. Well, as you well know, the president himself tweeted out this morning that maybe it's better not to pass anything considering the toxic environment that we're in. I mean, we were talking earlier about the Time magazine cover and other uh, forms of propaganda that, that just make kind of meaningful, honest debate almost impossible in this country. He says, suggests that we wait until after the election. I'll read the tweet, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Republicans should stop wasting their time on immigration until after we elect more senators and congressmen and women in November. Democrats are just playing games. They have no intention of doing anything to solve this decades-old problem. We can pass great legislation after the red wave. What do you think? Every day that that border remains open is another day that the poison that's killing people in western Pennsylvania can come in. It's not acceptable. You know, I was talking with one of my colleagues from across the aisle yesterday, and I'm not going to say who it was, but expressing frustration with the division in Washington, D.C. generally. And it's unfortunate that you, could, you can't have Democrats coming to vote on a, a significant piece of legislation. Uh, uh, this has not always been the case. Uh, you, you take a look at the Reagan economic recovery. We had broad Democrat support. Yeah. Uh, when, when, you're, when you're moving major pieces of legislation, it would be very helpful if, if some uh, on the other side of the aisle would just stay, step back, take a look, and see the good that was in that bill. You know, they uh, have a, an expression that nothing concentrates the mind, and I won't say the end of the original one, but in this case, I would say then an election defeat. And if, in fact, there's no blue wave in November, if, in fact, the Democrats are defeated yeah. significantly in November, that might bring them to the table more than they would be likely to do so now. Quick last word. Go well, ahead. You, you, think, you think they might have learned in 2016 with the stunning upset victory you of think? President Trump. And you, you have the coastal elites totally missing what's going on in the interior yeah. part of the country. Uh, um, uh, and this ties into so many different issues, including what we're doing right now, taking a look at how the FBI conducted the Clinton email investigation right. and, and the current investigation. When you have a guy like Peter Strzok talking about Trump voters, that he can smell them at a Walmart in Virginia, the kind of contempt that these elites have for everyday yeah. Americans is really shocking.